How's it going guys? This is Sebastian here with Costa Performance. In today's video, we are going to be discussing running, some of the positives, negatives, um, and also the ways that we use it here at Costa Performance and implement it into our training. So I'll start with the why we do it. So there's a lot of reasons why we implement running here into the program at Costa Performance. Now, a lot of times we don't necessarily put it into a sense of track workouts um, or going to a field and doing running. It is more from a mechanical standpoint. So there are a lot of really good benefits that we can get from running, such as foot and ankle dexterity and strength, which are super important for tennis, for being able to plant and push very quickly from the court and in incorporating change of direction into what we do. So one of the big things that we think about here is in the aspects of coordination as well. So we're introducing this movement to them and from a mechanical standpoint to really work on hip flexion, hip extension, and also triple extension, which is one of the basics of force development for a lot of our athletes. So we use our running mechanics as more of a way, as like a, a way to crawl before you can walk, before you can run. In order to understand how to move well side to side, we have to understand and master those basics from a linear or forward and backward standpoint. There's also a lot of movement forward and backward in tennis, so we also gain some benefit from that as well. And like I had mentioned, sprinting is one of the most basic ways to increase power and force development. Now, talking about sprinting, this does not mean we're going out and running 400s or not even necessarily going out and running 100s, okay? Most of the energy systems that we have to develop in tennis, what the research is showing, is between five to 12 seconds, which covers all of the surfaces, so between hard court, grass, and clay court, um, as well as kind of the different age ranges and genders as well. Yes, there are points that are outliers to that. Yes, Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer and Nadal, they've always played points that are almost a minute long and you know, a couple tens of you know rallies and whatever it may be, but what the basic research shows us is that it's anywhere between five and 12 seconds, okay? I don't know if any of you guys are good with your track knowledge, but Usain Bolt runs 110 seconds. Most of us can't get to that. So that's why we like to sit a little bit lower than that 100 meter mark, especially when we're talking about energy system development. I'm gonna to touch back on that later. So now let's talk about the why nots. Why don't we do a lot of those 400 meter workouts? Why don't we take our athletes more to the tracks? And why don't we do that? One, it's from a logistical standpoint. I can do a lot more here in the gym than I can at a track. Now, are there benefits from doing track workouts? Absolutely, but let's talk about those a little bit as well. So you'll say a lot of times, oh, running helps increase VO2 max. Okay, I'm okay with that. Where's the research to show that VO2 max helps with performance? Specifically tennis. There isn't any out there. Now, what you could say to that, well, a good VO2 max means you can aid yourself in recovery. Absolutely, I agree with you. But did you know that long distance runners and repetitive runners also are one of the higher risk populations for anemia, which means that they're damaging their red blood cells, which means they can't carry as much oxygen into their muscles to help themselves recover. So is it really the best tool that we can use? So that high impact of going out and running lap after lap after lap after lap can sometimes be a little bit detrimental to our athletes recovery. Now, again, can doing some more longer periods of cardiovascular activity help us out a lot for recovery? Absolutely. Get our skeletal muscle pumps pumping that blood. Blood flowing is always number one for recovery. Absolutely. Would swimming or more low impact kind of environments be a little bit more advantageous for recovery? It's in our opinion that that's the case. So a lot of times if we're having our athletes do it for more of a recovery standpoint, biking, what you see a lot of the athletes do post matches at the Grand Slams, elliptical, like I said, swimming, even going for a nice long walk on the beach, excellent ways to aid in recovery, okay? Now, another thing that we always hear a lot about, kind of those longer, more high intensity sprint workouts um, and whatever it may be that you see, um, is it's a good mental toughness thing. I couldn't agree more with you. I think that putting someone into the ground, I think that running a 400 meter repeat 400 is one of the most high intensity things and grueling things that you can do, especially outside in this Florida heat. I cannot agree with you more there, but is it worth the risk? That's kind of the thing that we always go back to. So if we're looking at energy system development, helping the athlete become a better performer on the court and helping them become more mentally tough, we like to implement more sport specific tools for that conditioning, such as spider drills out on the tennis court, 
repeated sprints on the tennis court. So it's a shorter distance with lots of, lots of changes of direction, right? That's what tennis is. It's a short sprint, change of direction, short sprint, change of direction, not 400 meters, 400 meters, 100 meters, whatever it may be. That's not how tennis works. Okay. So that's another big thing that we like to think about here. Now to end this one important thing that I want to bring up is something that I've kind of heard through the grapevine. I may be getting this wrong, but it's kind of called the swimmer theory. So the idea of this theory is, does a swimmer, you know, think about Michael Phelps, Katie Ledecky, whoever it may be, do they have that physique because they swim or do they swim because they have that physique? There's a lot of things out there on social media now. Everyone likes to post whatever it may be, the best vacation, the best meal, the best exercises that they've done. But a lot of times we have to take a step back and say, okay, are they doing that because they're capable of doing it and their body allows them to do that? Or is it the other way around? Just kind of some food for thought. So again, running, very, very good for athletes. I think there's a lot of benefits, but I just think that we have to be a little bit careful in how we prescribe it to a lot of our athletes.